Some time ago we had a look at ADSI's X12 set of fans. They might not have been the very best, but the concept was pretty interesting and they look quite cool. Now ADSI decided to take an AIO, slap a couple of these spaceships on there, pump them up with some steroids to make them spin at 1600 RPM and add the beefiest water block pump cover I have ever seen. But hey, they are generous on the plastic. It's, it's a generous shape design. So this is the ADSI X240 Extreme All-in-One Liquid Cooler. It exists in a 120, 240 and 360mm version and the one we will be talking about today is the 240mm version. Overall it's a pretty interesting AAO cause it's actually surprisingly good while using one very bad component ended up making it just average. So stick to the video cause it's going to be weird. But let's first go over the specs. This 240mm AAO is being rated to handle up to 280 watts TDP while using a standard 27mm thick radiator. The FEP sleeve tubes are in my opinion way too short at 300mm, but at least they are adjustable at the water block. Speaking of which, let's take a look at this generous behemoth of a pump. It's supposed to be spinning at up to 2600 RPM with a ceramic bearing and a huge copper plate at the bottom. To power it, there is a 3-pin fan header sticking out which allows you to adjust the fan speed via voltage control. As much as I would like to make a couple of jokes about the ridiculous size of this thing, cause it's, it's really a bit over the top here, most of it is empty. You can feel it and it's completely made out of plastic, which may look spacey from far but once you touch it, 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 it does feel cheap. But this thing is surprisingly silent at full speed. Now of course there are other pumps that are quieter, but comparing the other ones in this price range, especially ADSI's own lineup, it is shockingly quiet. Take a look. My best guess is that though it feels empty, they just stuffed it with something lightweight and sound dumping, like Rockpool. I'm not sure, but I, I also don't want to take it apart, so let's Take it like that. Now coming to the fans. ASI used almost the same X12 fans which we already reviewed before. If you want to learn more about them, just take a look at the reviews after, after this one. And I use the word almost because although the installation, connection and, and whatnot is completely the same, these are a beefed up version of them. Instead of the 1200 RPM they were able to hit before, these are spinning at 1600 RPM while pushing 56.3 CFM at 1.97 mm of H2O at 35.6 dB. Usually I would just accept these numbers and call it a day, but while doing my research I found that there are several ASI X12 fans with different speeds. There is the 1200 RPM case fan version, the 1600 RPM which they used on here, and apparently there is a 1500 RPM version which is indistinguishable from the 1200 RPM version except for the speed. And all of these are just called X12. Because I'm not a big fan of just blindly believing numbers, I bought one of these digital laser RPM devices. After about half an hour of trying and failing and then realizing that the included silver tape has to go on the thing that I am measuring, not behind it, I can confirm that the case fans are indeed spinning at 1200 RPM and the ones on the AIO are spinning at 1600 RPM, so it's pretty accurate there. In order to connect all of the fans, it's absolutely the same as for the fans itself. Included in the box, you'll find ADSI's magnetic fan controller as well as a whole bunch of cables. The controller has to be connected to SATA power by using the included adapter. The RGB cable coming from the water block has to be connected with one of the small connectors on the controller and the fans have to be hooked up with the proprietary to proprietary cable with the header being located on one of the legs. From here you'll be able to choose between different RGB modes and set a fan speed by using the included remote. But if you want to do all of that using your motherboard software, which you hopefully do, you can add the proprietary to 3-pin ARGB and 4-pin PVM adapter, which plugs into one of the ports which looks big but is actually small, and just enjoy a remote-less control of everything. Now, I don't want to repeat everything I've already said in the fan review, because it's, it's really basically the same thing. There is no frame, the screws are hidden inside of the small cap, and a bunch of other things, so if you want to know more about them, please watch the x review. On the water block installation part. The cooler is compatible with AM4, AM3, and so on until FM1 for Team Red. 
On Team Blue, you can go with the newest LGL 1200, every LGA 1150, and so on until 11775. In order to install it, it's pretty much the same for each platform. On Team Red, you just need to prepare your socket by removing the black retention brackets and backplate, but from here, it's the same thing. We first need to slide either the AMD or Intel water block bracket onto the block. Then we need to prepare the backplate with the inner screw hole sticking up for Team Red and outer ones sticking out for Team Intel. And then we can add the screws by sliding them in from the bottom and fixing them with the black plastic screw holders. The exact holes you need to shove the screws in will depend on your exact socket. But just press the backplate against your motherboard, align the holes and you will immediately see which one are yours. After the backplate is positioned, we can screw it down with the nuts and washers. Now everything is ready for the water block. Add some of the included thermal paste on the CPU, position the block and screw it down using the included spring nuts. But now, how about the performance? We used the X240 on our usual bench table using a Ryzen 3900X at 4.36GHz and 1.4V V-Core. At full load, the X240 managed to keep the CPU at 53 degrees above ambient, which, yes, it is being outperformed by an Arctic Liquid Freezer 120, but it is also significantly better than the alias H240. Slowly lowering the fan speed in 10% increments showed that the X240's performance is slowly deteriorating. Starting off by beating Asus Blizzard 240, it started to lose track beneath 70% fan speed. Compared to other higher class and price 240 AIOs, uh, like the Kraken X53 or ML240 Illusion, it doesn't stand a chance. The only one which is able to be beaten by the X240 is ASI's own H240. Taking a look at the noise revealed the exact same picture with the X240 only beating ASI's own H240 AIO. And here are also some sound comparisons. Now, before you might think that the whole AIO is bad, hold on for a second. Each time I test a AIO, I also repeat the full blast test by replacing the original fans with Arctic P12s. And this time it was absolutely worth it. I already mentioned in the X12 fan review that the way these fans are constructed and the fact that there is no outer frame, which will help to guide the air in set path, just ends up with a whole lot of air being pushed to the sides where it just has no use. Putting a radiator behind the fan makes it even worse, as now there is also something obstructing the air path. So by replacing the X12 fans with P12s, pushed the X240 up the scale, outperforming the Kraken X53 and Blizzard 360 at 49 degrees above ambient. A 4 degrees C different to the original fans. Sandwiching it with 4 in push-pull lowered the temp another degree at 48, making the X240 almost compete with Fantex and Arctic's 360mm lineup, which is just incredible. I can't really tell if it's the radiator, if it's the water block, or a really really good pump, but the AIO works really really well, and the fans are just absolutely not made for that kind of task. So yeah, the benchmarks really blew my mind here. Out of the box, the X240 performs like an average Chinese AIO, but replacing the fans with something actually good and you got yourself a surprisingly good performing cooling monster. On the design side, I will really leave it up to you. Yes, there is a lot of plastic on that water block and everything just feels kind of cheap, but go back a meter or two and you got yourself a spacecraft looking CPU cooler. Weird, but it, it is something different. So in my opinion, if you want to go with that design for some theme build or whatever, Sure, why not? But I would absolutely recommend to hook a pair of well-performing fans in front of the radiator so that you have the good fans pushing the air through the red while the DJI fans over there are in the back just being there for the looks. That way you kind of have the best of both worlds. Good performance and a spacecraft. Just keep in mind that the tubes are extremely short at 300mm and that you are not able to install these fans behind a fan space as the design will just not allow it. On a short side note, I wanted to mention that on some motherboards there might be an issue with the PVM control of the fan controller. For my ASRock motherboards it works perfectly well, but on my Gigabyte DS3 something I had to manually set the fan header to be PVM and not auto because 
apparently using two of the four PVM wires makes the board do weird stuff. But not a huge issue, but you should be aware of it. Okay, so this should be it for the ASI X240 AIO. A bit of a surprise. At this point, I would also like to thank Intertech for providing this to me. And if you have not watched the X12 review until now, take a look at them. You, there you will learn more about the whole orientation issue and the, the air issue and whatnot. Okay, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.